Hey, welcome back guys. Today I'm going to void the warranty on my Aquatic Life T5 Hybrid and get some cool features in the process. So this video is by no means a dig on Aquatic Life. I love the T5 Hybrid they made. It's just missing some features that I had previously on the T5 Hybrid that I built myself. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I did to rewire the ballast and then also clean up the cables. Um, their new uh, wire hiding system, um, basically just these end caps, um, they do a good job, but you know, I really just didn't want wires coming out both sides of the uh, fixture because then they still have to go up towards my ceiling and I want something that just look cleaner. So I'm moving all my wires down to one end and then I'm uh, rewiring the ballast so that way I can actually get the lights paired up uh, front to back. Let me show you what I mean. However, uh, please do not do this if you do not know what you're doing with electricity. I've had a lot of experience over the years, so that's the only reason why I did it. Um, just know your DIY limits. Uh, I got a ton of requests after I posted this project to Instagram, so I'm just putting it out there for the folks that know how to work with electrical. So this is a quick schematic I made uh, for the ballast wiring and the end caps. Uh, you can see that these uh, two ballasts are completely independent, which means either you get the front on or you turn the back on or you can turn them both on at the same time. Uh, that's why they have separate power cords. And that's pretty much the, uh, the root of the problem that I'm going to be addressing. Now, in order to get the power cords both on the same side, what we're going to do is flip the ballast like I'm showing here. Pretty quick and easy to do. I'll show that here in a moment. I'm just kind of giving an overview real fast of all the steps involved. This is the wiring for what I'm calling the outside bulbs, which means if you're looking straight at the fixture, the one closest to you and the bulb furthest away from you. Now, this is the wiring for the inside, which would be, you know, this is the two, um, like the second closest to you and the uh, third closest to you. And this is the finished schematic of what my wiring looked like. Um, note that I did have to drill the fixture in multiple places. So if you do try this project, you're really going to want those cable hider end caps that Aquatic Life sells. So after unmounting my light fixture, pulled it down, pulled out the bulbs and got ready to go to work. I just used a marker to number the end caps just so I could keep track of the front to back because this whole fixture is gonna be completely disassembled. Um, here I'm just taking off um, the structural pieces that hold the two fixtures together. Make sure you keep your screws and nuts organized. If you lose one of those or you drop it on the floor, uh, you're probably gonna be spending quite a bit of time looking for them. Um, just also be careful. They're easy to strip because they are so such small screws. We're pretty much just doing the reverse of the original assembly process uh, when you got the fixture at first. Um, if you're doing this and you just got the hybrid, um, then you're actually in a good position, a lot less work to do. Um, so, you know, I wish I would have done this in the very beginning. I was just really happy and excited to get my tank set up. Uh, so I just kind of put this project off until I could get back to it. With the end cap off, we get our first look at the ballast wiring. Also note that if you have those silver screws in there to use for mounting the lights to the ceiling, you're gonna wanna pull those out right now. So here's both fixtures side by side disassembled uh, as far as the end caps are concerned. Now all you have to do is just slide out the fixture that holds the reflectors. Um, there are a couple metal tabs under there that kind of go in a track system. So make sure that when you're pulling it out, just be a little gentle so you don't bend those tabs, but it should slide out pretty easy. And since both sides are identical, um, basically just repeat the same steps on both sides. Here's the, uh, the ballast. It's only held in with three screws, so pretty quick and easy to pull it out. Now, when you're removing the cable protector here, you might need to squeeze with a pair of pliers and kind of wiggle back and forth to get it out, um, but it eventually comes out pretty easily. And once it comes off, then you can remove the actual end plate altogether, uh, which you're going to want to do because we're going to need to drill it to pass through some wires. 
And now it's time to start cutting end caps. Uh, so note that you're gonna wanna cut off one of the end caps with the yellow wires completely. So both wires are going to it. You're gonna clip them uh, because you're gonna have to splice in new wires to extend it all the way to the other side. And then we clip the blue wires um, for that socket and then strip the ends. Uh, note that you're not gonna be doing anything to the red wires whatsoever. Let's go ahead and remove the screws out of the, uh, the guide that holds down the ballast. And after the three screws are removed, then all you have to do is just slide the ballast right out. I'm flipping the ballast just so I can get the electrical cords all on the same side, um, just to make it a lot cleaner uh, for where I run my wires up to the ceiling. Since I'm going to have to pass the power cord back through the end caps, I'm removing uh, the, uh, the power cords from the actual ballast. All you have to do is just pop down those little buttons and the wires come right out. Now I just want to get a kind of general idea of where I'm going to have to drill um, the structural pieces here. Uh, so all I'm doing is just making a quick, quick mark uh, where I'm going to use my power drill to cut a hole. Uh, note that you're going to need kind of corresponding holes on both sides um, for the, uh, the end caps as well as the uh, structure piece there. Now since I'm drilling this by hand, I like to start off with a smaller drill bit. Uh, I used a 1 8 inch drill bit here, and then I generally just work my way up. Um, I did two sizes in between all the way up until I got to a quarter inch drill bit. It just keeps the hole cleaner. Um, you have less burrs to work with. And then afterwards, I just end up using a uh, file uh, to take off any like sharp edges and whatnot because you don't want those cutting into the, the wire. Okay, now it's time to get to the wiring. Uh, if you're going to do this project, please don't use like basic wire nuts uh, that you find like in a normal like lamp fixture. Uh, these are solder seal connectors. Um, basically, they, the way they work, you just kind of intertwine the wires together and then you slide it down and heat it up and it's waterproof. That's the important part. Um, but the, the solder on the inside is going to give it a nice strong connection. Um, so uh, this is definitely the, uh, the way you want to go if you're going to wire something that could potentially get exposed to uh, water humidity. I'm just using a basic heat gun I got from Home Depot. I think it cost me like 20 or 30 bucks back in the day. It gets up to like 1,000 degrees. Um, you just got to be careful not to actually melt the, uh, the wires too much. Now I also drilled the, uh, the smaller end caps as well uh, to make sure they have a hole that matches up uh, with those long structural pieces. Um, in this case, you know, I decided to push the wires uh, through the top, um, so that's the reason why I drilled a hole instead of using the, uh, the hole that was already there at the bottom. Uh, but I mean, you could use either, uh, but it just the way it worked out when I drilled it. Now all I had to do is basically feed the power cable back through. Um, in this case, I have a hole that's pretty much the uh, perfect size for this. And these wires are going to be held in place uh, nice and snug. So I didn't really worry too much about the, uh, the wire protector because these have nice thick shielding on them. Uh, just a matter of basically passing the wires through now and connecting everything and then screwing the end caps back on. One important thing to reiterate here is the way that the yellow wires are connected to the end caps and the ballasts. Uh, it's important to note that there's a span of wire that goes between the two end caps uh, that are connected to the same ballast. So make sure you run that piece as well. Uh, this is also the reason why uh, one of the end caps connected to the yellow wires has to be cut completely because you have to splice in a nice decent length of wire uh, to get that end cap over to the other side. And since both sides are the same uh, or symmetrical, you can basically just duplicate the same work on the other side of the fixture. Um, just again, drill, run the wires, and then uh, reassemble everything, put the screws back in, put on your cable hiders, and you're done. Uh, so let me show you what the end result looks like. Okay, so here she is all cleaned up and put back together. Uh, the inside channel are ATI Blue Plus bulbs. 
I use the Neptune Systems Apex uh, to program my T5 so that way uh, the blue bulbs turn on about two hours earlier in the morning and then also in the evening they run about two hours longer uh, than the white bulbs. And then after that it's just the radions that ramp down. Uh, those white bulbs, uh, those are the ATI Coral Plus. I really like the spread of light they give. Uh, corals always look really healthy and it's easier to photograph under a slightly wider light um, than using all blue bulbs. So here's what the, uh, the ramp down would look like. And then we'd just be left with the, uh, the radions. So here you can see the benefit of moving both ballasts down to the same side. I was able to get all four of those cords zip tied together, tidied up. Doesn't look like a mess of snakes like it did before. So I'm so much happier. I'm glad I took on this project. It makes a spread of light, especially in the, the mornings and the evenings, just look so much better um, in this tank. Um, again, I like the T5 hybrid from Aquatic Life. I just wanted to take it to the next level. Uh, so I'm going to show you a full tank shot here real quick of the, uh, the ramp up um, here in the morning. And you can see uh, that there's a, just a nice even blanket of light. And that kind of just kind of continues as the whole system ramps up. So super happy. If you guys have any questions, uh, please drop them in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram at whatthefrag. I appreciate you guys watching. Take care and be well.